The ideal server should have performance, reliability, flexibility, redundancy, and even compactability. But can you build a low power draw server, maybe less than 30 watts, for less than 500 US dollars? That is a good question. Should we look at some options? First one here, a HP ProLined DL 360p server, which is a great option, but it uses up to 250 watt. Pretty heavy. There's also the ProLined Micro Server Gen 10 Plus. Great option. Lots of awesome hardware in there, but I propose something that is cheaper. It's going to use less power. It will be able to boot from an NVMe. It will have SSD storage and it can, you can even upgrade this CPU and RAM. There it is. I call it a Frankenstein mini server, but as of all good stories, we first have to go back to the beginning. This is it, my lucky auction find. $45, oops, I don't mean to show you that. No, it's okay, we can we can go through this quickly. So race Z, address, yeah, business details. Oh, check that out, number of subs is definitely growing, we're doing well. Urgent, definitely read the fine print, what does that say? Ah, yes, subscribe for more, but only subscribe if you enjoy the content, very important. Okay, going back. What are we going to do? We're going to take this little mini PC that I got for 45 US dollars on auction. We're going to convert it into a server. This is the HP Elite Desk 800 G3 mini PC with an Intel i5 7500T and it came supplied with 8 gig of DDR4. So the modules, that SSD is my handiwork. I'm just doing some testing. Uh, before the filming but for now let's go for ram i got this for 66 dollars can you believe it 32 gigabytes two modules 16 gig each hyper x we're also going to fit an nvme now this is a king spec nvme 256 gig why do i go for such a cheap nvme well check the prices on your standard nvmes they've literally skyrocketed next key component we need to be able to upgrade our machine because it doesn't have any uh, cool parts. So this one's quite unique. This is actually a U.2 SSD adapter. I'm not gonna use it in this build, but I feel like it's actually really cool. You could totally run these in your server if you were that way inclined. Oops, someone will knock the RAM around, but this is a really good adapter. I'm not gonna use it on this build, but absolutely check these out. The Berichtoft, uh, it's a funny name. Either way, it's a U.2 SSD adapter, which is basically a NVMe conversion from M.2 to U.2, the enterprise grade interface. Next key adapter, $20, 10 gigabit dual port network interface card. That's right, $20, check the pricing on the line. It's insane, it's such good value. Hopefully it works, I'll let you know if it doesn't. But in the meantime, we also need a backup plan. What if that card doesn't work? Well, this one's $13, just about $14. It's a 2.5 gigabit network interface card. It actually runs off the M.2 ANE, so the WLAN slot. That's kind of handy. And it'll be able to replace the rear Flex IO port, which is located on this particular HP Mini. But uh, more on that soon. For now, oh, those adapter cables look a little bit loose. That's okay, fine adjustment. Can't expect much for the money, but next one, SATA cables. Now these aren't just your standard SATA cables for a very low price of $6 per cable. They uh, plug into our SSDs or hard drives quite easily and convert them to USB, but that's not the magic. The real magic is in the power supply. So check this out. There's a little DC port on this particular unit, which can couple with this DC power supply. That means we can power a hard drive or an SSD through USB. Okay, it's kind of cheating, but you get the idea. This is totally going to work. If it doesn't, well, uh, yeah, well, hopefully it works. I'm pretty confident it'll work. So USB power. We plug this into our mains. That's a smart plug, by the way. We'll be monitoring power draw later on. Next one. To install our NVMe, we need an adapter. For around $11, I picked up one of these. This is a M.2 NVMe 2 USB adapter. Now, thankfully, we have a USB-C port on this particular mini PC, so we can use this cable and actually convert it, which is going to be so, so cool. That allows us to boot from an NVMe, as promised. We don't even need to use the M.2 slot on this motherboard. But here it is. It's the Union sign. Pretty capable looking. RGB, why not? And it actually comes with thermally conductive silicone, so we can help to remove some of the heat from our little Kingspec SSD. Do they get hot? I assume so, but there it is. USB port, magically, oh, it didn't quite 
fit inside it. Okay, we have to actually install it, can't just CGI that in. But uh, very important, you could fit that thermally conductive silicone underneath. Nice to see there are actually some chips on this uh, really, really cheap NVMe. As I said, 15 US dollars. Uh, ignore the date there, it's not brand new. I bought this a while ago. But nonetheless, we're going to use it. It's a spare one, it's going to do the job. Now let's quickly crack open this Union Shine case and see what's cooking on the inside. Not expecting much, should absolutely be a M.2 M key slot, very important for the MVNME. There it is, installed. We'll quickly mount our standoff, then if you were that way inclined you could fit that thermally conductive silicone. But I'm not ready to commit to that just yet, I'm just in the testing phase here. We'll see if this uh, closes up alright, test it, see if we can boot. Should already have our Windows operating system as a test. Uh, just check me fit the thermally conductive silicone on the top. Mm, no, it doesn't quite close off. So that has to go underneath the NVMe if you were to use it. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, let's close this up. This will be our quick boot test. And then we move on to our next phase. But really cool. We got a USB C cable, so we can totally use USB C to USB C. Definitely get higher speeds. It's rated up to 10 gigabits per second, which is pretty fast. Not as fast as those NVMEs can handle, but nonetheless. Next component. Now in order to maximize the functionality, we need some PCIe slots. This is our M.2 M key converter to X16. But take note, it doesn't actually support X16, it's only four lanes. But we could, if we were that way inclined, fit an external GPU. This is the EVGA 970, which I've had for many, many years. It's basically just a show pony at this point, but hey, it looks good there, right? Slightly off balance, but uh, do I trust it? No, we'll probably just, we'll just leave it here. It's okay. But we're not doing an eGPU. Maybe you want to do an eGPU, but I'm not going to do an eGPU because we need some bandwidth. Now, the next one here has a Wi-Fi card, and I'm actually going to forego the Wi-Fi card. Uh, it's a bit of a trade-off there, but I mean, does anyone still use Wi-Fi in the modern day? I feel like everything's LAN these days. LAN's far more reliable, but maybe you want your Wi-Fi connection. It is handy. But for now, we're going to dump that one and move on to our next adapter. Now, this is a A and E key, because that's an M.2 slot, would you believe it? But it's only got one electrical lane, so very limited bandwidth compared to the M.2 slot, which has four electrical lanes. But nonetheless, this is an X8 slot. We could run our 10 gigabit network interface card on that slot, but uh, we won't have enough bandwidth. In fact, I'm not even convinced this is going to work. So that slot, maybe not so good. Let's try the M.2. That should give us far higher bandwidth. Now, is this going to work? I'm not 100% sure yet. I haven't fully uh, committed to this concept. That's why I went for the backup of 2.5 gigabits per second. Is this little adapter here. Should the 10 gig fail, we got the backup. Now, next one, RAM. Now, here we go. We've got our two modules, SODIMM DDR4 2400 megahertz. Take note, these are unbuffered, so none of that fancy ECC registered memory, but that's okay. We will surpass and hopefully manage to keep this machine running. Now, very easy. We've got a couple of clips holding these modules in place. Once we remove those, uh, what was that one there? Okay, pretty standard, 2400. Let's switch it out for a slightly larger capacity. And again, this is really, really cheap RAM. $66 for the pair, that's a really good deal. Click in place and we're ready to go. I love how easy it is to install RAM on these uh, mini PCs. That's really cool. Now with our dual, dual socket, we don't even need to upgrade the CPU. The CPU is going to have to do for now, keeping this a uh, really low budget. Nice to see the fan flips up and down as well. That's really cool. And probably should mount those M.2s, but for now I'm sort of just curious. I'm just uh, doing testing. So what do we do next? Well, I've taken a Smart Store NS 4300N NAS, and it's probably valued around 40 US dollars at the moment, if you check it out on Amazon and or eBay. And I'm going to take this particular NAS. I'm going to strip out the insides. We're going to use it as a hard drive caddy. It's still cheaper than buying a dedicated hard drive caddy. Now, there's still a few little things I've got to sort out on this particular mini PC, including whether there's enough power to actually power that 10 gigabit Ethernet card. Thus far, some preliminary testing. I don't think it's actually going to work, which is a little bit annoying, but that's why I went for the backup, 2.5 gigabit. Done some testing and I am getting some pretty solid speeds through that one, so that was easy. Uh, SSDs! That's right, we have SSDs. 
and uh, they're an unusual brand, Golden Fur. Now you may have heard of these, as far as I could tell from online reading, these got pretty good ratings. And in fact, I went for some rather large ones just to be uh, on the safe side in terms of usability. And uh, these are one terabyte. Well, so they claim. I've done some speed testing and I mean, I got half decent speeds. These are nearly as fast as something like a Samsung 870 QVO, which I guess is pretty solid, but there is a problem. If you've seen it online, well, it's true. These are complete fakes. I need to open one up and see what's cooking on the inside. But for what I can tell, up to about 240 megabytes, flawless. They run really well. You get some pretty good speeds. And then after that, they turn into, well, probably worse than USB, just about. So topping out about 30 megabytes, sometimes as low as 15 megabytes per second on uh, write speeds, which just isn't enough. Now I had hoped to take a whole bunch of these and pull them into either a RAID 0 or ideally like a RAID 5 pool. Now I've done some testing there as well. The RAID 0 did not increase speed and I've also done a quick test on RAID 5. Uh, but for the time being, I think it's going to work. The only caveat being capacity. It's not going to be the capacity that I bought. So be warned, if you do buy these, you can assume they're not going to be the capacity that you buy. But the ones that I picked up, one terabyte, which, yeah, they've, they've actually been a ride. They've actually run relatively well, minus the capacity being way less than it should be. So if you want a 240 megabyte hard drive that reads as one terabyte on your system, uh, this might be the one for you. Now, why did I buy these in the first place? Well, pricing. Prices went skyrocketing, and it's becoming really difficult to find affordable storage. So I would have suggested this is a backup plan, but after the speed testing, I'm not so sure. But in saying that, not feeling too terrible because how much did I pay for them? It was about 23 US dollars for a one terabyte. They're on sale at the time. Uh, so that's not too bad given the price. I could still not buy a, say, 500 megabyte hard drive or even a 250 for that price. It's not actually too bad, uh, all things considering. But definitely keep that in mind. Watch out for these uh, cheap SSDs. They're always cheaper for a reason. Uh, but I will say I got lucky on some previous ones as well. King spec, 256 gigs. So maybe the secret here is to go for the smaller SSDs because they're likely going to be more likely to be authentic. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's probably better to stick to some more reputable brands like the A-Pacer or the SanDisk compared to the Golden Fur. But really confused as to why there are so many positive reviews on these when they're just not that good. So stay clear of these SSDs. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to get this server out up and running it's going to be really cool we're combining all our little bits and uh i think it's going to work maybe not 10 gigabit not this time around i still got to test that card make sure it's running for the meantime it's making weird noises so i suspect not enough power but we'll test that out in the future as well subscribe if you want to see where this is going to go hit that smash that like button and i'll see you on the next video take it easy